बेसिकली वट यू हैव डन इज आपने पहले तो ऐसे स्टॉक्स निकाले जो बहुत ज्यादा हाईली को रिलेटिंग है इफ यू लुक एट दिस ग्रीन मीन्स यू नो हाईली को रिलेटेड रेड मीन्स नेगेटिवली को रिलेटेड नेशनल वैल्यू ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल स्टॉक शुड बी इक्वल यूर वी आर गेटिंग दिस ऑप्शन ऑफ बाइंग द पेयर शॉर्टिंग द पेयर मे बी इफ यू रेड्यूस द नंबर ऑफ लॉट्स वी माइट हैव इन प्रॉफिटेबल बाई वन इन कैश एंड शॉर्ट अनदर वन इन फ्यूचर्स दैट इज द बेस्ट Good morning, guys. Uh, today we have with us Mr. Raghunath from Define Edge, and uh, we are going to touch upon a very uh, least talked top topic in the stock market. Just के बारे में मुझे भी जो knowledge है बहुत कम है. That is pair trading, and uh, that is what we are going to discuss today. So uh, welcome, Raghunath sir. How are you? Yeah, hi, hi, Rohit. Uh, I'm good, and thank you for inviting me to share uh, something about pair trading. Uh, my pleasure, sir. Let's start. yeah you know pair trading people have been doing you know for decades and uh, they do it in commodities they do in equities uh they they do in every segment that is there and so in pair trading let's compare a stock a and stock b and they are you know moving along in same direction and uh, there are there are some minor differences here and there Okay, let's assume stock and stock B that moving in such a fashion as shown in the chart. Now, pair trading involves uh, trading of two correlated instruments where overperforming instrument is sold and underperforming instrument is bought in the belief that their performance will converge. Okay, so this is very important that whatever pair that you choose for this trading strategy, that they they have to be correlated. Correlated in the sense that. they have to kind of move together for most part of time and if there was uh, there was some divergence or something like that happens you are going to bet that i am going to uh, short the overperforming instrument and buy the underperforming instrument and we know that they will come back again uh, converge at some point of time so that kind of you know benefits uh, uh, in the pair trading strategy and it is a mean reversal strategy so it is important that they travel together but there can be some divergences at some point of time but they should always come back together so that is why it is a mean reversion strategy it is a market neutral strategy where the pair of instruments are traded irrespective of market trend so it doesn't matter if you are in bullish market bearish market sideways market as long as those pairs are correlated then we can do in any market no issue with that okay so let's look at the steps and rules that one has to follow Uh, on how to do this pair trading strategy the step one will be to identify pair of instruments right uh, this is the most crucial step obviously pair of instruments be it stocks currencies commodities or etfs are usually chosen from same market segment where there is a higher probability of higher correlation you should uh, um, trade those pairs which are in the same market segment uh, or same sector for example you can uh, do pair trading with um, you know metals stocks let's say or it stocks but not between it stocks and metal stocks the the reason being is that you know if you select these pairs from the same sector or same segment they face same kind of regulatory risk or some other risk or they'll have same kind of advantages so most part of the time okay they move Uh, in the same fashion so they are highly correlated uh, for most part of the time so that is why you have to choose a pair from the same segment or sector for the pair trading strategy for example there is a good chance that you'll find a good pair of stocks or pair trading from within id sector or finance sector rather than between the sectors stocks in the same sector tend to move in same direction most of them not than not you know most people uh, so this is a step 2 where we measure a uh, few statistical uh, things a most common thing that people use is a correlation like you know uh, they find how two pairs are correlated is there high correlation or low correlation and depending on that they do the pair trading strategy so today i'm going to talk about two more things which are not that common but they are still have been there for a long time is called as cointegration and mean reversion i'll come to each one of them step by step so what is correlation correlation is quantified by correlation coefficient between two variables 
and the variables such as log returns of the pairs. So if you take log returns of stock A and stock B, and then you look at their correlation coefficient. Okay, so this basically measures how they are moving together in terms of returns. So if they they are in the same direction and same magnitude, then there is a high correlation between those uh, two stocks or two pairs. So correlation coefficient ranges from minus one to plus one, or you can say minus hundred to plus hundred, where percentage in terms. Where plus one indicates, or plus one or plus hundred percent indicates a perfect positive correlation, while minus one or uh, minus hundred percent indicates a perfect negative correlation. A perfect positive correlation is when one variable of the pair moves in upwards or downwards direction, then another variable also moves in the same direction with the same magnitude. So it's like you know they are you know in step with each other when they are moving or uh, in a particular fashion. Then we can say that there is a perfect correlation. Let's see some examples. So here we are looking at uh, Bank Nifty and Fin Nifty. You know both are from finance field, uh, and actually some of the stocks are common between Bank Nifty and Fin Nifty. So we know that you know they all face same kind of risk or same kind of tailwinds or headwinds. So they tend to move in the same fashion. Now we can see from the chart as well. Both are you know more or less moving. in the same direction and in the same magnitude and they have a 98.5% correlation okay so these are very highly correlated uh, instruments now if you look at negative correlation or no correlation uh, this is ltim stock and ofss stock and if you look at these two uh, see the, the one is bullish in the beginning and the other one is sideways and later the other one is bullish and the other one is bearish so there is no correlation between them because they are mm. not moving in the same direction or with the same magnitude mm. so we are not interested in these kind of pairs for our trading so this is this is a correlation matrix i mean this you can also plot in uh, excel sheet if you get the correl the correlation coefficient from whatever constituents of any index or any sector So here I plotted the correlation coefficient between two pairs, as you know, as like a matrix. It's, that's why it's called a correlation matrix of the Fin Nifty con constituents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how they are correlated with each other? Now, if you if you look at this, green means you know highly correlated, red means negatively correlated. Somewhere in between will be yellow or uh, you know orange kind of thing. So as you can see here, if one stock against its own. Will always be hundred percent correlation. 100%, 100%. Okay, yes. So that is like our control, let's say. Hmm. Now, if you look here, ICICI Bank, ICICI GI, and ICICI Prulai, which is insurance company and uh, bank. If you look at these three stocks, they are highly hmm. correlated. Hmm. So they are from the same company, and you know they have kind of same behavior, and you see that they all move together in same fashion. Okay, mm -hmm. at least when we have measured this uh, correlation at that point of time, we have seen something like that. So, and if you also see uh, the uh, HDFC Bank and HD HDFC, you know it was when you know, it was in the stock market, uh, mm -hmm. they were also highly correlated because you know they are from the same management, they have kind of same uh, uh, forces influencing its price, and then there was Tata Motors and Tata Motors DVR, you know both mm -hmm. were kind of same stock actually. so yeah. those were highly correlated stocks and lot of people have done pair studying uh, you know with such pairs so here you know icsa group stocks is another example where you know one could do this kind of uh, trading if this good correlation uh, is is shown and you will see you know correlation with other stocks as well uh, between them so that is correlation so we are measuring the correlation that's one part now the, coming to the second part uh, here we are measuring something called as co integration now i'll talk little bit statistical definition because there's no simple way of explaining i'll try to explain but it may be little bit difficult but don't worry so co integration is a statistical measure of two time series variables okay time series is nothing but our you know stock mm. uh, you know date versus price it's just a time mm. series right mm. so these time series variables 
it it measures this configuration measures the two time series variables which indicates if linear relationship of the variables is stationary or non stationary so in this time series variables what we are actually measuring is the log returns of stocks a and stock b so here you can say stock a stock b we are taking the log returns uh, sorry log prices hmm. okay and then we are measuring their linear li relationship okay hmm. uh and then what we are saying is it stationary or non stationary what the relationship between them is it stationary or not stationary okay. so let's say if you are measuring spread now the spread is kept on increasing so is it stationary or non stationary it is non stationary right because mm. it is not going sideways mm. so but if the spread goes you know sideways like you know mm. uh, up mm. and down up and down around the uh, average then that is stationary hmm. okay so it is important for us that we are looking at a uh, at a pair where there is stationary relationship between them and that is measured by quantigration okay now this cannot be calculated in an excel sheet and so uh, this you know you need to know little bit of uh, you know coding knowledge or at least in python where there are some packages using which you can calculate this quantigration hmm. uh so so let's say this is how we measure the quantigration so basically what we are measuring is that uh, is the relationship between is stationary or not that's it so what we are looking for is it has to be stationary so that you know when they you know come to each other the spread between them come to each other to the mean then we can trade that uh, mean reversion characteristic of the pair it is very important that they are mean reverting pair and not a trending pair so basically basically what you have done is aapne pehle to aise stocks nikale jo bahut zyada high highly correlating hai and yes. then you are trying to measure ki unke yes. beech ke andar ka jo relation hai while yes. being in a correlation with each other yes. they yes. are highly wave forming type yes yes so that you can But extract the Uh, yeah. uh, the up and down movement between because अगर दोनों yes. same भी चलते रहेंगे तो uh, ah. arbitrage का opportunity तो कभी आएगा नहीं yes yes so they have to so be actually, same but highly yeah. volatile yeah it makes yes. sense so actually actually we measure all of this independently correlation भी independent है quantigration mm. independent है but later I'll tell why they are measured independently and why you can use one of them or two of them in combination or three of them in combination when you are doing pairs trading so for example here here there are there is a nifty bank nifty that there is a high percent of correlation right usually they move in same direction more or less okay high correlation and but there is no quantigration between them which means that the relationship between jo spread ka jo non stationary movement hai wo nahi hai isme so there is no quantigration between uh, nifty and bank nifty there is only correlation बट क्या होता है कि समटाइम्स देर इज को रिलेशन विच इज वेल गुड एंड फाइन बट जब वेन दे स्टार्ट डाइवर्जिंग समटाइम्स दे कैन डाइवर्ज फॉर वेरी लॉन्ग पीरियड्स ऑफ टाइम एंड इट हैज हैपन बिटवीन निफ्टी एंड बैंक निफ्टी दैट यू नो दे हैव डाइवर्ज फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स एट ए टाइम एंड दैट कैन बी यू नो डेंजरस फॉर दी फॉर द पे ट्रेडिंग इन दैट केस सो वी शुड नॉट जस्ट लुक एट को रिलेशन वी शुड ऑल्सो एटलीस्ट लुक एट को इंटीग्रेशन एंड यू नो the mean reversion that i am going to talk about so let's finish the cointegration thing uh, this is uh, a chart of axis bank and pfc so we are plotting the price against each other and as you can see here again they they are uh, again correlated they more or less they are bullish and later it's a little bit sideways and there is a 90% correlation but they are also cointegrated so this is like you know kind of a very good pair for us to do pair trading strategy for people who want to calculate correlation i'll just show how to do the correlation in excel sheet so that you know if somebody wants to go and try they can do in excel sheet as well so simply you take uh, eod prices so let's say i took in this case uh, coal india and gale both are from energy uh, uh, energy sector so we are measuring correlation over last one year of data okay so we have to go like you know 252 trading dates or uh, 365 calendar days below 
and then so it is measuring of last one year so i'll go to 252 yeah here so if you look at the formula here uh, i'm hope, i'm hoping that it's visible this is yeah. correlation formula okay mm. and then we are measuring b2 to b252 of the coal india price so mm. from day 1 to 252 days to the current mm. day and the same thing we are doing for the gale mm. c2 to c252 and then we are looking the correlation between two of them so it simply what it does it takes the log returns of coal india and gale and then measure correlation between them and this is what how you get the correlation so initially you can see they are negatively correlated and that's why it's in red and then later it is non correlated for example now and slowly they have developed a positive correlation so this can happen so at some point of time two stocks are totally uncorrelated and later they can become correlated and again they can become un uncorrelated so this relationship you know can keep on changing uh, through the time it's not always that they have to be highly correlated all the time so this is a very simple formula you can go and do in excel sheet for correlation and as i said for co integration it's very difficult you need to have little bit of coding knowledge i will give references on how these things are uh, calculated so don't worry we measure the co integration but actually what how co integration is measured so this uh, uh, as i said there is a statistical formula it's called as augmented dickey filler adf okay so when we do this on this uh, on this two stock a and stock b uh, on their uh, log prices and we take the spread between those log prices and we do this test is a statistical t test then we get some value and that value should be less than or equal to minus 3.5 and the confidence should be greater than 90% to imply that there is stationary relation between the that pair that where we are measuring this co integration and here uh, this sorry this should be greater than uh, uh, minus 3.5 then that that indicates uh, non stationary behavior so we want always stationary behavior so that is important for us for us to trade uh, pairs trade okay so what these two actually uh, describe in most simplest terms co integration describes a long term relationship between asset prices okay so it measuring in the long term like you know last one year it measuring how tightly they are you know with respect to each other what is the relationship between between them how tightly they are with respect to each other correlation describes short term relationship between returns okay log returns and this we have seen seen in the excel sheet you know the highly uh, the uncorrelated one uh, has become later correlated so it kind of describes a short term relationship and that is why we are looking at both correlation as well as co integration and now we are looking at the we are going to look at the third property it's called mean reversion so this is like you know non stationary or uh, trending relationship and there is a stationary and which is nothing but mean reverting relationship between the pair right and that is what we are going to measure now again there is another statistic is called hurst hurst exponent it basically serves as a criteria to select either momentum or moon mean reverting strategy okay so because we don't want momentum relationship between our pair okay we want stationary on mean reverting behavior between our pair so this exactly what hurst component measures a value of 0.5 implies a hurst value of 0.5 implies a brownian random process so let's say if you are measuring a relationship between two stocks and it's kind of random there is no particular either it's not not not, uh, not stationary or it's also trending it's kind of very random process a value of 0.5 indicates in, indicates a brownian random process so we have to ignore this uh, this pair in that case a hurst value of value between 0.5 and 1 indicates trending or momentum behavior so if you plot a spread and if that spread is you know trending in one direction which means one of the stock is going in one direction the other one is not catching up with the other stock but it is kind of trending right we don't want those kind of pairs 
So anything uh, which have a highest value between 0.5 and 0.5 is indicates trending. So we are discarding those pairs. We don't want them. And finally, we have a highest value between 0 and 0.5 which indicates anti-trending or mean reverting behavior of the time series. And this is exactly what we want. So we are measuring correlation, quantigration, and mean reversion. And we want that our pair has these three values together, at least if not all of them together, at least two of them together, so that we have more confidence in trading the in that particular uh, pair. And again, this is, it, you need a little bit of Python knowledge to calculate. And these are readily available formulas. And I will give references to books based on which, you know, these are uh, calculated. Now, let's say I measure uh, correlation, cointegration, and mean reversion. Okay. O sub TK. Then what? Then when I'm going to uh, trade, right? So we are going to trade when there is a divergence between the two stocks. Okay. For most part, they are correlated, co-integrated, but we want to, whenever there is small diversion, we want to trade, and then we are hoping that they're going to converge. And th from that convergence, we are going to benefit. So this deviation or the diversion threshold from price relationship has to be determined. And that is done by Z-score, okay? In pair trading, we convert distribution of spread between prices of stock A and stock B spread of uh, log prices of stock and stock B, we use that to plot the z-score. So what is z-score? X, X means the, the data point that we are measuring, the, which is nothing but the spread between stock A and stock B. And mean, mean is nothing but, you know, last 30 days of average of that particular spread between the two stocks. And I'm going to show in Excel how to do this. And remember that here the z-score is measured over 30 days. Okay. Uh, so we have mean and then divided by standard deviation. Standard deviation again of last 30 days of the spread, the spread between prices of stock A and stock B. So what basically z-score does is that, that from the average, okay, any given point from the average, how far it is away in terms of standard deviation. Okay. Is okay. it one standard deviation away or is it two standard deviation away? So if the, if it is two standard deviations are more, which means the divergence is high, high, high. and it's more likely to mean revert. And I'm going mm. to sh show the chart for that. So whenever it goes above two standard deviation or below two, okay, then we are going to do the pair trading. Now let's see the chart. Now here you can see you can see here z score it is zero zero means the spread whatever spread is there it is close to aver, uh, average uh, spread price okay it is close to zero now it is if it is uh, above two means it is two standard deviations above your average spread between the stock A and stock B okay so we are simply measuring the how much the spread is how many standard deviation away from the average price. So it is, it is kind of an oscillator. It, sometimes it goes uh, below, sometimes it goes above. Because, you know, they're mean reverting, right? It cannot yeah. be like a flat. It has to go up and down, up and down. Yeah. Up and down. So that's exactly what, you know, we are measuring in the uh, uh, z-score. So now let's, I'll show, it's very simple to do and this. So one more thing, one more thing that uh, the, the previous curve that Z-score indicated that you showed. Yeah. Is it also cyclical in nature? Yeah, it is cyclical nature. So, so for most part, for most pairs that are, you know, highly correlated or co-integrated, they have, you know, go to go up to two standard deviation or two and of standard deviation. And rarely it can go up to three also. And then they come back again to zero and then again in the other direction. So okay. it's always like mean reverting. Okay. So let's see how one can calculate a z-score. So at least based on like, you know, if you want to do this space study just based on correlation, you know, using the Excel sheet that I've shown you, you can simply go and use that to calculate these values. But for co-integration and mean reversion, you have to, you know, do that in Python, unfortunately. 
i hope there is a simple way of all this also yes i am going to show that as well yeah okay so here we have red date uh, coal india gale again we take the same uh, pair now here we are looking at the log returns and their uh, difference bit the spread between them this is a most simple formula and there are other uh, modifications as well for this uh, formula so here we are measuring the spread right and then here from here because we need 30 days of data so in terms of trading days it will be like 21 22 days okay uh, so here the formula is very simple we are measuring the point so in this case this is the point the spread between stock a and stock b we are measuring it and then we uh, subtract the average of last 21 or trading dates or 30 calendar days okay we are taking the average and then after that we divide it by standard deviation of the spread standard deviation is nothing but we are kind of measuring the volatility of uh, uh, of the spread okay so now and that that's it you put that formula and then you drag the column and then you get the values and this is the z score so now this score is kind of two standard deviation uh, above the average in this case and then it keeps changing then and then it goes on the other side as well as minus 2 and again comes to zero again goes to minus 2 you know so on and so forth so it has that oscillating uh, kind of mean reverting characteristic so what z score tells us is that when to initiate or execute this trade now this is the example you have to do now we got a pair which has either highly correlated or highly co-integrated or has shown mean reversion characteristic between them and if it goes below minus 2 then i buy the first stock of the pair okay so let's say this is a stock a and then short the second stock of the pair let's say stock b so this bajaj auto and tata motors both are in you know uh, auto industry and so here we buy this pair so when i say buy this pair means the first stock we are buying and second stock we are shorting and, and the, then we keep holding yeah and the value value has to be same uh, value so if, we are, if we are buying bajaj auto with 1 lakh then tata motors has to be sold yes. with 1 lakh yes it's a important point and i am going to cover that as well okay so once you buy equal amounts let's say and then some people what they do they they uh, they exit at z score zero which means they have converged whatever relationship divergence that they had that is converged so i want to exit but some some people can you know they can also hold up to you know the other other side as well kind of stop and reverse kind of trading let's say so they buy here and then maybe they can wait up till here and then they sell again here so here they short when when they say short the pair shorting the stock a and buying the stock b and you keep repeating this process uh, until you get you know how and then you can have stop loss you can have target price you know those are whatever we expect from uh, normal trading process so but when we are going to execute in general we have learned everything right correlation co integration uh, mean reversion and z score so now we have all that knowledge let's say we have calculated all of that so when i am going to initiate the pair trading execution so when the highest exponent value is less than 0.5 okay that is which measures the mean reversion the co integration measured adf value of less than minus 3.5 with 95% greater than 95% confidence we can also take 90% but it's better if we take more than 95% confidence and then correlation coefficient value that correlation that we measured between two stocks should be greater than 80% at least and again this is this can you can change these values uh, as per your uh, experience in this field and finally the z score is greater than plus 2 or less than minus 2 and this also you can customize you can say plus 2.5 or minus 2.5 or plus 3 or minus 3 but the signals become rare when you put you know minus 2.5 or 3 so two are you know kind of more common signals that you'll get let's say we we have a may, uh, way of measuring all those uh, that i've talked about can we objectify 
the whole system can we make some kind of system out of what we have measured okay so what uh, i've done is that if your stationarity like that a hurst exponent value is less than 0.5 then i'm giving a score of 1 but if it's greater than equal to 0.5 i'm giving a score of 0 and uh, that co integration one which is less than 3.5 and confidence of 99% or more i give a score of 3 for 95% confidence 2 and 90% confidence 1 and less than 90 0 and correlation coefficient greater than 82 greater than 71 less than 70 0 so you need to initiate a pair studying when the net score of all after taking all these into consideration is greater than 3 greater than or equal to 3 but it's it's even better if it is higher so maybe three maybe you need to be a little bit cautious but if it is six or five six is the maximum so if it's six or five then that is much better so this is a tool that you know a screener that we have developed uh, in in our uh, application where we can screen um, the stock the stocks uh, of uh, between uh, i mean take a sector and we measure the stationarity correlation and uh, co-integration between those within those sectors okay here all nothing means it is but we are looking at all the sectors together but only the stocks of the same sector not between the sectors okay so now because these signals are rare so if you just keep on looking at sector by sector you know you have to go one by one by one so what we said that let's look all of them together and see what is the score so in the screener as you can see so the state there is stationarity and there is high confidence in terms of integration the cadf that we measured and correlation is also very high here it is nine above 80 percent so score of two so all combined together it has a net score of six okay but the z score where we measure the standard deviation of the spread right it is not minus two or plus two so we cannot execute pair studying at this point of time because that score has to be above 2 or minus 2. ABB and HAL, that has a net score of 5 and it also has a Z score of plus 2. So here we are going to short this pair. When I mean, when you short a pair means you short ABB and you buy HAL. So short first stock and buy the second stock. And here another pair that we have, Cipla and Sun Pharma from the pharma sector also has good score 5 and again this also give a good you know the divergence that needed for us to execute the pair study so let's say now everything has aligned there is a good net score and uh, the z score also is uh, uh, plus 2 or minus 2 uh, above plus 2 or uh, below minus 2 but if you are executing a pair trade as rohit said that they should be of equal value so the notional value of the individual stock should stock should be equal so see people can do with uh, the pair studying with cash in the cash market but the problem is you can buy in cash but you cannot short in the cash at least we our uh, uh, slbm where you know we uh, borrow and short the stocks is not that active so we cannot really borrow the stocks to short it so we can only buy so how how we can do that in that case then futures come into picture because we can both buy as well as short the futures right or we can buy in cash the stock uh, that we want to buy we can buy in cash and the same equivalent value or actually first we short the futures and same equivalent value we will buy in the uh, cash market so they are of equal value so equal notional value so in a futures, uh, for a futures uh, uh, lot, what is notional value is nothing but lot size multiplied by the price. That will give you the notional value. Now look here, Bajaj Auto and Tata Motors. Before normalization, let's say I got a signal and I want to pair trade. So I want to calculate the notional value and this futures price uh, multiplied by lot size, it gave me 11.6 lakhs and Tata Motors gave 8 lakhs. So there's a huge difference between them. Maybe 5% is 5% difference between notional values is acceptable, but too much difference is a problem, right? Because, you know, if they, when they're converging, they're not converging with same 
you know uh, values so you might end up uh, having loss in that case that's why it's important that we have equal value in both the stocks so how we can normalize in the case of uh, futures we have to buy multiple lots in that case like in this case we bought two lots of bajaj auto which makes the notional value of 23 lakhs and tata motors we buy three lots that makes notional value of 24 so pretty close but as you can see this can be huge you know your uh, the amount that you have to pay is huge right you know three lots two lots it's not easy for most retail people so alternatively what you can do as i said that you short let's say i short uh, tata motors okay so the notional value is 8 lakhs so then i can buy 8 lakhs equivalent of cash of bajaj auto now both are same so that you can do per, per trade uh, execution right now other choice is let's say uh, here bajaj is bajaj auto is 11 lakh is a notional value here it is 8 lakh now you can buy an option depending on it is short or long you can buy a call option or a put option to actually normalize that uh, uh, normalize this value both of them make it to 11.6 lakh so i'm going to show how we have done and you can also do if you have an option chain anybody can do that so it's not uh, a big deal so um, so it's important that we are doing pair trading with equal values of stock a and stock b of the pair now uh, in the tool that you know i'm going to show we have actually also provided back testing of last two years of how uh, of a given pair has performed okay let's say in the screener i find like uh, uh, in this case it's uh, coal india and gale i found uh, that in my screener but i want to know how it has performed previously if we have done pair trading on this so just with 80% correlation itself only correlation we are not using quantigration or stationarity just 80% correlation itself gave very good result but it doesn't mean that this will be applicable to each and every pair hmm. with there you might have to use more than one uh, uh, for uh, getting good results okay but you know luckily here in this case just with between, uh, just with correlation itself we are able to do pair trading and also find good profitable trades now here see we can we have used only single lot so here we have not normalized some people what they do is that they don't normalize they say okay 10 15% difference i'm fine so they also do like that so what we said that okay we'll also give with single lot we'll also give with normalized lot normalized lot nothing but we are uh having same notional value when we begin the trade so if you go to this opstar.defensesecurities.com opstar.defense.com this actually is not released yet uh, so even before releasing you are able to see this uh this you are going to see on monday it is going to be released it is going to be free at least for a couple of weeks or month so anybody who has seen this video can go on and explore all you have to do is simply subscribe for a free account so now i am going to uh, this pay trade screener where we are going to look at all those parameters and all those scores Nifty so this is for index Nifty. yeah this is for index only indices like you know i want to see relationship between nifty bank nifty hmm. uh, bank nifty fin nifty fin nifty mid cap nifty and so and so forth if somebody wants to do people al- hmm. also do between nifty bank nifty so hmm. that is also possible so here uh, we have done uh, the that calculation for uh, all the sectors together see apart from that we have also calculated nifty and uh, the relationship between nifty and nifty's constituents hmm. so how let's say you know there are some stocks which always move along with nifty and there are some stocks always go in opposite direction of nifty so those kind of things you can find if you go to these uh, these particular uh, examples okay so let's see at the all section now look here a lot of them have score of 6 and 5 right we said that 6 and 5 is better up to 3 is fine no issue uh, and then z score it has to be uh, below minus 2 or above 2 and again this is this can be optional you can say it can be above minus 2.5 below minus 2.5 or 
above minus 3 and uh, uh, below minus 3 or above 3. So it can be optional depending on how you want to do the trading. So here, for example, Bell and Siemens, these are from the capital goods sector, right? They also tend to move in same because they supply goods to the infra infrastructure uh, projects. So if there is good expansion of infrastructure projects, you will see that you know their kind of behavior uh, behave in same manner, co-integrated and correlated. So now if you click on this Z-score, you can actually see the Z-score, the Z-score chart, right? Here we are getting these options of uh, buying the pair, shorting the pair, buying the pair, shorting the pair. Now, if you go below, now I, let's say I have stationarity, let's say co-integration. I want to backtest with this. Okay, maybe this is too strict. I want to maybe reduce the score to five maybe. Yes. Now you can see when you have stationarity score of one, co-integration score of two, and correlation score of two combined net score of five and we have backtesting of that which is this much but if you just use only uh, stationarity or correlation then also you'll get results see here just using those two we're still able to get good results and here you have to see here we have not yet kept stop loss and target price by which will also come in future but let's say you have a stop loss of 20 000, 30 000, something like that you can control your uh, PNL in that manner. So based on this, you know, okay, this is a good pair. It has historically has behaved properly. And maybe it, it might be a good idea to do pair studying on this particular pair. So like that, you know, one can, you know, test all these different criteria. There is information everywhere on how to test and all those things. See, I did with single lot, right? Now I'm doing with normalized lot. See, with normalized lot, it is again different. So it depends on that as well. Maybe with single lot, it was better. But when we normalize that value, it is not better because we are using too many lots. Maybe if we reduce the number of lots, uh, we might have been profitable. We don't know because that we have to calculate again. Uh, and with single lot, as you can see, this is good result. So that's how you uh, scan for it, find the pairs, and uh, see at the backtesting, last two years of backtesting, and decide whether you want to do it or not. And if you have funds for that, again, these funds, you need up to, if you do two futures, you need up to four to five lakhs. You know, keeping in mind, you know, MTM and all those uh, things, you need at least, uh, you know, four to five lakhs. And, uh, I can also do in combination with futures and options and as well as cash and futures as I talked about. So there are different ways one can do pairs trading. And uh, uh, earlier I said that I'm going to show you how we can like, you know, add an option to kind of normalize, normalize the notional value. So let's say I'm taking this Bell and Siemens, uh, I'm going to a pair builder. So pair builder is nothing but it is like a strategy builder of options, options, features, whatever, right? Most people know that you have a strategy builder, right? Now we'll take features. Let's say I'm buying features and then we then go to Siemens and then we'll say sell. So now it plots like how your uh, behavior of your PNL will be depending on how they move, right? So let's say if both of them went down by 1%, okay? Like let's say 1%. You can see that uh, Bell has a loss of 5,000 and Siemens has a gain of 8,000 based on these particular uh, notional values. So you'll have a profit of 3,200. Uh, so that you can see in the, this uh, strategy builder. And here but, you can see the notional value. Yeah. Of of them and now you want to neutralize normalize that right like i want to make 10 lakhs 10.8 lakhs in each of them so we are we are if you go to greek stab we suggest that what option you have to buy of which stock to neutralize this so we are saying uh, add 30 delta of bel so 30 delta call we have to add in this case so we go to option chain and say uh, 30 delta add karna. 54.945 yeah, yeah. calls yes. here here you can see call delta this sorry one. yeah 54.95 uh, call this 8000 call strike so 
So let's say I buy this particular cement. So sorry, this should be bell. Sorry. This should be bell. Yeah. This said we have to add it has to be bell. So let's delete this. Yeah, 310. Yeah. So now you can see they're 11 lakh, 11 lakh. Close enough. So that's, so now how your payoff chart looks like. This is how it will look, the behavior. So now it is kind of normalized and one disadvantage here is that you have to roll over both futures and options and you know keep checking that their kind of notional value is close to each other. So that is a disadvantage if you have to do uh, with option. So in that case, yeah, in that case, buy one in cash and short another one in uh, futures. That is the best, uh, I, I will say, best method to go about uh pairs trading yeah so so what are the advantages of pairs trading strategy so there is no directional risk uh the their lower max drawdowns because they're in, inherently they're hedged with each other right because we already measured yeah. that they are mean they have mean reverting phenomenon between them so they're kind of inherently hedged so that's why because of this inherent hedging of risk you, they have lower max drawdowns okay but obviously there will be exceptions. I'm not saying that it's always uh, not perfect. And it will be profitable irrespective of market trend. Again, as I said, you can do it in bullish, bearish, sideways market. So it doesn't matter what is the condition of market because we already established that, you know, they are behaving in that mean reverting fashion. So that's fine. What are the disadvantages? As I said, high margin requirement. Let's say if you're doing with two futures, and if you have to normalize both the values, which you have to do multiple plots. So uh, one alternative is to do with cash and futures. Another alternative with futures and futures plus options. And then fewer opportunities. So, okay, now we have screener. So you will find a little bit more opportunities. But even in screener that I've shown you, in 10, 15 of them that I've shown you, only two were there, right? That, you know, between so after measuring, uh, the scoring between so many uh, pairs. So that is kind of fewer opportunities you'll get if you look at only one pair, let's say. So it's important to look at as many pairs as possible so that you get more opportunities. If, if you know, uh, if you're in cash and you got the opportunity, you can simply uh, do the pair trading. A risk of stock events. Now, remember, let's say you have initiated a pair trading. Now there's some information came in one particular stock that affects only that particular stock. And that can, you know, that can lead to loss in your pace trading. But that depends again, it, you can be lucky also. It can go either way. You can be very profitable or you can be uh, making loss because we don't know which, may, which way the stock is going to move. And uh, depending on how the pay trading is structured, we might benefit or we might lose also. So that risk of stock event is there. So that one has to keep in mind that when we are going to do this, this can happen. So unless you're not willing to take that kind of risk, uh, maybe it's not better to do this kind of uh, strategy. And another risk is pay trading that, that I've talked about. Let's say I've seen a good correlation and I jumped into my pay trading strategy. And after that, they diverge. Let's say that, uh, you know, the Z-score went above minus two. But it kept on going up, let's say minus two, then it went to minus 2.5, right. minus three, minus 3.5. Then that pair is trending. Now right. that can happen. That can happen because uh, let's say we did this with between Nifty and Bank Nifty. So there is information uh, there uh, might be an RBI event, let's say. That RBI event led the Bank Nifty go in one direction. It could be up or down. That means that pair is trending at that point of time. And that can lead to loss if you are already entered that particular uh, pay trading already. So that also you have to keep in mind. So that is why it's important to choose what is your standard deviation at which you want to, you know, do the pay trading. Is it minus two standard deviation, minus two or plus two or minus 2.5 or minus 3.5? So it depends on how you want to do. Ultimately, you have to understand that correlation can be finished. Yes, exactly. It can and second thing is, hmm. second thing is, you have done discussion on the positional basis. Se ki hai. Uh, yeah. Does it have any implication on the intraday market also? Intraday, no, I don't think so. Because uh, 
uh, intraday only can happen if there is a huge movement like you know stock event as i said then only there is a possibility otherwise it is positional you know these trades can last from uh, 10 days to 2 months or more sometimes depends so depending on what is your exit strategy like exit i want to exit when the z score bo- go- goes back to zero or it goes back to on the other side of standard deviation so it depends on that as well as how long you are going to stay in the trade so in general intraday doesn't affect this strategy it's purely positional strategy but there might be there might be institutions who might be deploying it on the collocation data jahan pe unke paas yes hft ke upar hft ke upar they might be using it they might be using but see if you look in positional terms there will not be that huge effect see yeah. i mean if you see the two stocks in a sector they kind of move in same direction and there will be events i'm not saying that it will not happen there mm-hmm. can be events sometimes where you have that let's say you are saying co location data or some institution mm-hmm. bought suddenly some huge amount of stock in one one of the pair that can have, have a effect so you need to have some kind of uh, stop loss let's say i want to okay my risk is 2% of average national value of the pair or or uh, 20000 30000 is the absolute stop loss for me so that you know you can track and say okay if this is breached i'm going to exit yeah. nahi it, so, it, it is rather safe it is rather safe it is for those people who know ki mujhe risk kam lena hai but i have to be uh, statistically right और बिकॉज पोजिशनल है तो पोजिशनल के अंदर ऑलरेडी इट इज टेकिंग इन टू अकाउंट कि हमें कोलोकेशन का फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा बिकॉज वी आर ऑलरेडी मेजरिंग इट ऑन अ टाइम फ्रेम जहां पे वो डेविएशन पहले ही हो चुकी है वो यस एग्जैक्टली ऑलरेडी इट्स टू स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन सो वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग इट टू मीन रिवर्ट एंड मोस्ट ऑफ इट देन नॉट मीन रिवर्शन हैपेंस बट सम टाइम्स इट डजंट हैपन सो इट्स यू नो इन ट्रेडिंग और इन लाइफ नथिंग इज गारंटीड सो हियर आल्सो इट्स द सेम so we have to keep in mind that those inherent risks are there so that's why i said okay. advantages are there disadvantages are there so it's okay. up to you how much yeah how much uh, affordable loss that you can take before starting this strategy so what i will suggest that you know go through this screener while it is available for one month or so do some forward testing and see how it behaves Uh, how you can execute this learn these things and see uh, whether is does it suit your trading style let's say so do that and then maybe you can decide whether you want to jump into pair trading strategy or not ne definitely you for know, mean reversion yeah. this strategy is very good because uh, yes. kahin na kahin pe hum log bar bar baat karte to rehte hain ki 70% of the time market is sideways 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 yes and yes. this exactly takes benefit of that thing yes it is kind of let's say complementary to you no know, trending strategies yes let's i mean pair trending strategies so this is kind of complementary in terms of it's a mean reverting strategy so if there is huge divergence and you already know that this is a very good pair historically then go for it sir meri question nahi hai mujhe to samajh mein aa gaya mujhe to samajh mein aa gaya whatever you have talked about okay <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah little bit is statistics statistics there so i apologize to people or not from stats background or coding background because this is something unavoidable in this case you need little bit you know that coding i mean they can be readily available if you take little bit effort you will easily get you know you can contact me i can uh, give some links and also i forgot to give the references so there are some very good books on this pair trading because you know this is uh, this is a huge business you know Uh, in, in in institutions you know they do all kinds of trading they do market making they do arbitrage they do pair trading they do all kind of these things and these are from those market experts who have done these kind of uh, uh, methods so these are the books that i will suggest based on which you know i kind of uh, developed uh, this uh, strategy it's not my own i just re- read books and you know learnt from them and what what are the values that one keep keep in mind so all those came from these books and i think i i i'll tell one thing yeah uh, you are humble enough to say ki aapko main packages bata dunga python bata dunga but i'll suggest users that when this feature comes out it's better to 
take a yeah. subscription for something uh, which has already been developed because yes. uh, ask it from me jo khud strategies develop karta hu there is a huge yeah. effort required there is a huge infrastructure required because when all these correlation uh, coefficients this co integration uh, statistics yeah. are being calculated uh, there is a lot of database that is required at the back end yes uh, individual level ke upar if you don't have the it support which is very costly yeah. it is very difficult to emulate at a individual level yeah so yeah. that is what i feel about it again that's true are... that's true but you know sometimes uh, you know people want to do by themselves so that is why i showed yeah. in excel that okay you can also do but you know we, we have developed a tool and while it's available free you know for a month or so you can go and check it and if you like it use it otherwise no don't use it, it. i'll tell one more reason sir why yeah. people don't know about it because there are approximately 205 210 stocks in the fno section itself and yes and combining each with other is a lot of permutation and combination for that's a that's right. simple laptop or a pc also that's true that's true and for a human mind if you think that you can make it on excel and then uh, juggle it and th- uh, and find that particular yeah. because because these these arbitrage opportunities are like market inefficiencies yes exactly they are very difficult to find yeah that's true so i think if you have some if if the viewers have some experience of trading uh, they might understand ki main kis bare mein baat kar raha hu uh again yeah. it's open to you you have the references in front of you you have the website yeah. in front of you you can try it and then see uh yeah if you have queries yeah if you yeah. have queries also put in the comments put in the comments, put in the comments. i will ask regular sir to uh, yeah. just answer them yes yes definitely uh thanks a lot so, sir it's, it was a wonderful yeah. session for me also um, thank you uh, i mean there is a world beyond just charts just options just <laughs> intraday that we are looking yes. at and we are trying to get a glimpse of that anything yeah. you would like to add yeah nothing see i mean as for some for people those are in the market so there are a lot of strategies different kind of strategies so people have to have complementary set of strategies one strategy does not work all the time so you need to have those uh, complementary set of strategies in your uh, in your stack or in your quiver whatever you will say uh, so that you know that when to deploy which strategy and there can be sometimes complementary so maybe if you do let's say you are doing some kind of intraday option strategy then you are doing this kind of uh, positional strategy maybe they can they can you know kind of reduce your drawdown at some level so there can be this complementary strategies one can do which in the long term reduces the drawdowns and uh, reduces uh, risk inherent risk that is there in the market so that's all i wanted to say thanks a lot sir thank you rohit